Okay, this sermon is entitled, Dr. Michael Brown is an Unsaved Reprobate. Like to open up with prayer. And then with a few verses, all right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 100 reads, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Now, Dr. Michael Brown is notorious for writing a book entitled Hyper Grace, exposing the danger of the modern grace movement. Now, the simple fact that he has an antipathy towards grace proves that he's not saved. It's akin to a person who hates money and who won't accept any money, and then others think he's a millionaire. It doesn't make any sense at all. Why would you think he's a Christian when he hates grace, and grace is how a person becomes a Christian. Now, he has made some very blasphemous quotes over the years. And I've even heard him say that he would go to hell if he lived in sin. He has put up videos rejecting eternal security. But I'm going to give some of his quotes here and prove that he's not saved based on his own words. Here's his first quote. Here goes. Quote, simply stated, there is not a single verse anywhere in the Bible that pronounces us already forgiven of our future sins, parenthetically speaking, meaning sins we have not yet committed, not one verse, nowhere, not even a hint of such a concept. Well, what Dr. Michael Brown does not understand is that when Jesus died, all our sins were in the future, and there are scores of verses that make it clear that when a person is saved, all their sins are forgiven. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay, that would include future sins. Turn back to Colossians chapter 2. Now, you would have to be unsaved to believe this garbage. Because number one, he doesn't want his future sins forgiven. But in Colossians chapter 2, it makes it very clear that all our sins are forgiven. It reads in verse 13, And you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. That would be past, present, and future sins. So according to the Bible, our future sins are forgiven in advance. Dr. Michael Brown does not like this because he's unsaved. Now let's take a listen to another one of his quotes here. Now this quote proves that he's not trusted Jesus Christ at all for his salvation. He's a total lordship heretic who's an unsaved reprobate. Here goes, quote, Again, thousands are deceived in supposing that they have accepted Christ as their personal savior. Now why would they be deceived into thinking that? He's basically implying that you can't just accept Christ as your Savior by faith. Let me continue the quote. Here goes. Who have not first received him as their Lord. The Son of God did not come here to save his people in their sins, but from their sins. Pause for a second. He's implying that you can't just keep on sinning. That would be in your sins. But he fails to understand that every single person alive keeps on sinning. The Bible says there's not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. He's in denial of this. He must think he doesn't keep sinning, which is another proof that he's not saved. 1 John 1, 1.8 and 1 John 1, 1.10. It goes on. To be saved from sins is to be saved from ignoring and despising the authority of God. It is to abandon the course of self-will and self-pleasing. It is to forsake our way. It is to surrender to God's authority, to yield to his dominion, to give ourselves over to be ruled by him. The one who has never taken Christ's yoke upon him, who is not truly and diligently seeking to please him in all the details of life, and yet supposes that he is resting on the finished work of Christ, is deluded by the devil. So what he's done is he's teaching lordship damnation. He's making surrendering your life over to God part of salvation. He's confusing salvation with discipleship. And he's mocking the idea that you can rest in the finished work of Christ. And he says that you're deluded by the devil if you do so. 
That's a hellbound reprobate. That's the only way you could believe this garbage is if you're not born again, you're not saved. He's not resting in the finished work of Christ. He's going straight to hell when he dies. Now, his main issue, like I've said, is he hates grace. And the Bible tells us that God is gracious. Turn over to 1 Peter chapter 2. He doesn't like this, but that's tough. It reads in verse 1, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. The only type of grace God offers in the Bible is hyper grace. Why would anyone preach against hyper grace, write an entire book calling it dangerous? It's because he's not saved, he's going to hell, and he's an unsaved reprobate. Child of Satan is what he is. Turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm sick of this garbage. I don't know why anyone listens to this stupid fool, this line of fire garbage. Yeah, line of fire is a, a very befitting name because he's going to the lake of fire. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 makes it very clear that God gives hyper grace. It reads in verse 8, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. So, the only type of grace that God offers is a grace that abounds. It's infinite, it's never-ending, and it's all-sufficient grace. And if you don't like that, tough. Don't call yourself a Christian. Go find some secular religion or some anti-Christian religion out there and go be a part of that. Because biblical Christianity is all about grace. And Dr. Michael Brown is not saved by grace. He's not saved at all. He's a complete works-trusting, unsaved, self-righteous bastard who's going straight to hell. And that's all there is to it. So we need to stop regarding him as a Christian, and he needs to be called the devil that he is, who's an unsaved reprobate straight out of hell. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Does the Bible teach that you can forfeit your salvation? That as a believer, someone could deny Jesus as Lord, refuse to follow him, and turn away and therefore forfeit their salvation? I say the Bible clearly says yes. I say the Bible clearly says yes. I say the Bible clearly says yes. I say the Bible clearly says yes.